Hey guys, so uh, today is a little bit of a, is it a different video? No, I'm just starting off a little bit differently because, okay, let's do the basics. First of all, Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. It's fun. Sometimes, you know, you see some stuff go down on the timeline and I happen to be involved and then you're like, lol, this is funny. Or you don't, I don't know. And second channel in description, I like to post on there just random stuff. And there's actually something um, exciting I'm going to be doing in a minute, not in a minute, like on my channel in a few videos time. So uh, subscribe and you'll know what that is when it comes up. <laughs> So today I'm gonna start off my video a little bit differently because some stuff went down on the timeline. If you don't follow me on Twitter, this is the first time you're gonna be hearing of this. Gabby Hanna. I've made multiple videos on my channel, whether they were full videos or just videos, you know, like my mini tea videos where one story will be about Gabby Hanna and then there'll be like three or four other stories that are about someone else. But if the Gabby Hanna story was the main story, I would put her in the title and thumbnail because I would always pick the main story to go on um, my title and thumbnail. So Gabby Hanna has released a song, I think it was two days ago and her song, didn't do as well as she wanted it to do and that is a fact whether that is because people weren't interested in the song or because YouTube didn't allow people to be interested in the song is up for debate but the song didn't do as well as Gabby Hanna wanted to it wasn't even a song it was a music video for a song that she had already released she then went on a venting session on Twitter Instagram, YouTube, and everywhere else. And that would be perfectly fine. I actually am a huge support of people standing up for themselves. If YouTube is demonetizing your videos or not pushing videos out, you have every right to speak on that. At Team YouTube, at YouTube creators, you know, go for it. Um, and there'll be a lot of YouTubers that will support you because we're all kind of, you know, trying to figure all of this out together. So we tend to like, you know, support each other on the timeline. And then she says that she's been pushed out of recommended, that her videos aren't trending anymore, and that she's been shadow banned, which I don't think Gabby knows the, the, the definition of being shadow banned. Recently, Nikki Tutorials was shadow banned, which means if you typed in Nikki Tutorials into YouTube, her channel didn't come up. And even if you went into channels, her channel would not come up. Um, you could not search her up. Megan Rinks was recently hacked and she was shadow banned because she was hacked. And if you tried to look Megan Rinks up, she wouldn't come up. And the only way that you could watch her videos is if you received a link, a direct link to the video. When you type in Gabby Hanna, the first thing that comes up is Gabby Hanna. Now she has a problem with the fact that when you type in Gabby Hanna, a lot of the videos under the search are drama videos. Now, um, that is how YouTube works. YouTube is an algorithm based platform, like all platforms, where the algorithm figures out what is most clicked on and what isn't, and then it will recommend more of that. Now, Gabby Hanna claims that she should be, when you type in Gabby Hanna, it should be all her videos and all her millions of views and not drama videos, because she doesn't want that. She doesn't want people that first find out about her to see drama videos on her. Now, uh, I already showed this on my Twitter, so if you wanna follow me on Twitter, type in Jacqueline Hill, see what videos come up. Type in Jake Paul, type in Logan Paul, type in anyone that's had any videos made on them. Now, go on google.com and type in Kylie Jenner. The first two links will be to her Instagram and her Twitter, possibly maybe kyliecosmetics.com. The following websites after that will all be articles about her. BBC News, Daily Mail, The Sun. You will not find <laughs> Kylie Jenner's stuff on there. The first few links, yes, which is, you know, you type in Gabby Hanna into YouTube. Her channel pops up, her music pops up, the latest from Gabby Hanna comes up. So you can always find, you know, eight to I think 12 videos back that she has uploaded is the first thing that comes up because it's literally the latest from the creator. And then her second channel will come up and then there'll be drama videos about her. That's how it works. That's what free speech is. YouTube cannot, when you type in your name, only show your stuff because that is then biased and it is YouTube favoring you and not showing people all the stuff about you and only showing them your stuff. That is not how YouTube works. YouTube is a, an unbiased platform, I guess, or should be. So if you type in Gabby Hanna, it will not just be Gabby Hanna's things. It will be things about Gabby Hanna as well, because when you're typing in a person, you want to know everything about them. So YouTube is going to put out the most comprehensive list of things about Gabby Hanna, your music, your videos, your main channel, second channel, and then drama videos about you, because that is how searching on the internet works. You're not shadow banned. I actually, I'm not gonna obviously post the screenshots here because that is, I already discussed that with Gabby. I, I'm not the kind of person to, without someone's permission, post private messages. But just as a gist, she kind of explained to me in DMs why she thought she was shadow banned. I tried to offer alternate explanations like, hey, have you checked this out? Maybe it's this. I was genuinely trying to be helpful. I don't know how that came across in messages because sometimes when you type messages, they seem a bit blunt. But I tried to offer different alternatives. I tried to, you know, ask her if she's looked into analytics kind of deeper because if you kind of learn more about YouTube analytics, you can tend to find a lot of really interesting things. So I, you know, I offered a few alternatives. I said, maybe it's just not a, a matter of being shadow banned, but more just YouTube not seeing a purpose in recommending your videos as much because of some other things. For example, the fact that she's been losing 40,000 subs every single month consistently for about six months could be a reason why YouTube's not recommending your stuff. YouTube tends to not recommend channels that are not growing and more regressing. If your channel is regressing in subs, 
why would YouTube then go out of their way to recommend your videos? They're obviously going to recommend channels that are growing and drama channels are growing. So they're going to be recommended. She's then upset that, you know, so obviously I, in those personal messages, I offered some alternatives and she said that she's actually just convinced that she's been shadow banned. And at that point, I'm not going to argue with her. So I said, yep, that could be the case. I mean, it could, it could be the case. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it's not that possible. I mean, not that probable, but I said, fine, you could be shadow banned. And then when I started looking deeper into what shadow banned means, I started tweeting about kind of different so I started tweeting about different searches uh, and different things I found about being shadow banned and then at that point Gabby Hanna got angry with me because I essentially agreed with her in DMs and then publicly was still disagreeing with her. We were messaging for about two hours. At that point I don't really want to argue anymore. I don't know if it was an argument it definitely wasn't, we definitely weren't agreeing. Uh, I'm not saying we were like actively arguing, but we weren't necessarily agreeing on things. So it wasn't like the most calm conversation. And at that point I was kind of sick and tired. So I was like, yes, fine, Gabby, you've been shadow banned. Let's move on. So she used that as me basically being two-faced of, uh, this is why we don't reach out to you guys. This is why we don't message you guys. Cause we're scared of you. Cause you're all biased and you know, whatever it is, that's fine. You don't have to message me. Matter of fact is I prefer when people don't message me. I prefer not being friendly with big YouTubers. You might see me interacting with them on the timeline. Every now and then I'll at, you know, I'll reply to a James Charles tweet because I think it's funny, but I don't have big channels in my DMs for a specific reason. And the reason being is what I'm gonna get into next. Gabby Hanna is on twitter.com currently saying that we are releasing slanderous and defamatory statements about her on our channels and on our Twitters. I can't defame you through opinions and I also can't defame you by repeating what someone else said about you. That is me reporting on someone else possibly defaming you. If Jesse comes out, which is what happened. Jesse in November came out with a video where she made statements about you as a friend or ex-friend. We all then reported on what she said because that was the only public information we had. That is not us defaming you. Even if that is all false, the person that defamed you is Jesse, not us. We reported on what she said. Um, now, if you had an issue with that and you, definitely, and you genuinely thought that she was defaming you, why didn't you message us? Why didn't you post your side of the story on the internet? I know you claim you don't like getting into drama, but conveniently you posted your explanation around the same time that you were releasing your last song and now you're throwing a fuss again because you just released another song do you see how this looks do you see how every single time you wait to, with an explanation until you have some kind of a release and then you stir up the drama again you claim you hate to be in drama but you're essentially the one that produces it the one that starts it and we just report on it now like i said we all okay i can't speak for everyone me and a few people that I know speak about things that are public. We are not in people's DMs. People are not in our DMs, as far as I'm concerned. So whatever is out there on the internet, we will gather and talk about. If you want your side of the story out there, you either make it public or you can message us with any proof. Does not mean that we will believe you because essentially now what has happened is Jessie put her side of the story with a few screenshots. Gabby put her side of the story with a few screenshots, but none of them really have any concrete evidence. So at this point, it's just who do you believe? Us picking a side in this isn't defamatory. People picking a side in this isn't defamation or slander. It is simply information has been put out and we have spoken about it and people picked a side. Unless you have a video recording of Jessie saying that she lied in that video, us reporting on it is not defamation. Defamation is putting out false statements. Us repeating what someone else said publicly about you is not a false statement. Um, they could have made a false statement and you can argue that if you want to, if you have any proof against that, but us repeating what they said is not a false statement. And then once you come out of your statement, we will then obviously report on what you said, which is what happened. I reported on what Jesse said, and then you didn't respond for like five months, six months. And then you filmed a video explanation and I covered that in a 25 minute long video. And I said, in that video on multiple occasions that now that more information has come out, I can look at things more objectively because I have both sides of the story, but that does not mean I believe either side. And frankly, I was not there. Um, so I can't say what is true and what isn't. I think I was more than fair, despite everything that, you know, Gabby has said about drama channels, I've been pretty fair. But the thing is to Gabby Hanna, being fair is being positive. Us being negative about you is not us being biased. It is not us being unfair. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because from this point onwards, there'll be no Gabby Hanna videos on my channel. And even going back, retrospectively, I am taking videos down about Gabby Hanna because she has now gone to Susan, the CEO of YouTube, to tell her how she doesn't agree with the fact that drama channels are being recommended more than her. Her rep went to executives at YouTube to say the exact same thing. And she has now tweeted multiple times, made multiple Instagram stories and live streams saying how we are defaming her and that she doesn't believe that us slanderous channels should be recommended above her. What that means is that she is angry that she's not being recommended. And because of that, she's trying to get our channels 
out of recommendations, possibly even taken down. And that is an allegation. Well, no, that is me insinuating what could happen from this. Even if she, even if her intention is not to take our channels down, that could be the outcome. Now, I will not sacrifice my channel for some Gabby Hanna tea. She is not that important to my channel. She is not what even grew my channel. Uh, she is someone that I spoke about probably like six months into having my channel. So from this point on, I have some full videos on Ga I'm very upset right now, if you guys can tell, because I'm, yeah, this is just upsetting to be fair for someone to react this way. You can be in my DMs and you can tell me that you disagree with me, which is what she did and she has every right to. Um, she can disagree with me. I can disagree with her. She can claim that Kenza wasn't a scam and I can claim that it was a scam. We can, you know, do our thing. Um, I was trying to be very civil in, in, in my DMs with her. I was trying to explain my point of view and trying to um, explain why I felt the way I felt. And whether she agrees with that or not is completely up to her, but she cannot force me to believe in her ideology about things and I can't force her to believe in my ideologies. But that does not mean I'm defaming her. Now, I will be taking, like I said, those, um, if I made any videos just about Gabby Hanna, they will now be taken down. Um, and if I made any mini teas about Gabby Hanna, they will not be taken down because they are not purely about Gabby Hanna. But what I will do is change the title and thumbnail so that, you know, people don't just stumble across my channel and see that I'm talking about Gabby Hanna. If you come across it, you come across it. If you don't, you don't. But you know, if you don't search for it, you won't really know which one is which. So that will be happening from this video onwards, I will be um, getting rid of Gabby Hanna's existence from my channel. I'll be actually going back on my Twitter and seeing how many times I tweeted about Gabby Hanna and deleting most of those. I'll leave up the most recent ones because I think those are very relevant to this whole situation and why it all started. And I will also be making a slight thread on Twitter as to why I'm deleting Gabby Hanna from my channel completely. Uh, well, 90% of the way there. And yeah, I'll be doing that. Most of my videos about Gabby Hanna are demonetized as well because it was usually about tougher topics like the Jesse Curtis situation. So they were demonetized and uh, yeah, I'm not making any money from them. So I don't really see the point. And you know, my videos do the best in the first 40 hours. After that, they grow about like two views a week. So I don't care if they're gone, I really don't. But the fact that she is trying to blame us for her channel not doing as well as it used to when she's, she said herself, she's been on YouTube for six years. After six years, most channels don't get the amount of views that they used to get. You're not going to get 3 million views a video anymore, Gabby. And you've also been losing subs. And that is not our fault. We don't like hack into people's accounts and unsubscribe them from you. What happens is people just aren't interested in you anymore. And that's fine. Like no one is saying that that's some kind of a crime. If I, in six years time, still get like 10% of my subs and views, I'll be crying tears of joy. Because at that point it's like, wow, I've survived six years and I can still make a very good income from this. Gabby Hanna has now claimed that because of us, she's missed out on opportunities and brand deals and stuff. When as a matter of fact, since the Kenzie Cosmetics scam, I've seen her do multiple brand deals on her channel. She's even bragged about the fact that she still says, sells $40,000 in book copies every single month. She said that on her live stream. I don't know what the commission is from that. Even if it's actually four grand a month, that is four grand from books that she hasn't been working on for a while. She makes music, she makes money from that. Spotify, Apple Music pays. She gets at least 500K per video, like views. Her channel is doing just fine. Um, even with losing subs, her views are just fine. They're pretty consistent across the board now. We are not to blame for your mess ups and the way that you haven't held yourself accountable. If you've been shadow banned, I I'm so sorry. Honestly, I never, no matter what channel it is, I never wish for that to happen to people. So that is not obviously my intention with everything. Uh, but the fact that she is, you know, essentially tagging us and dragging us across the internet, calling us defamatory and slan you know, slanderous and tagging team YouTube into that, like tagging the people that are responsible for our videos getting pushed out and our videos getting monetized is the lowest of low. And that is the reason why I will not be mentioning Gabby Han on my channel from this point onwards or my Twitter account or anywhere else. I just don't want to talk about her. And as a matter of fact, I don't think other drama channels should either because she is she has dragged us all <laughs> all through the mud so i think gabby will come to a huge realize realize re realization that the reason why she's still afloat is because people talk about her and it is the reason why she stirs the pot every single time she has a song to release because she knows that we will talk about her people will look for her and they will come across her song and click on it even if it's a hate watch you're still watching YouTube doesn't care if you hate watching. YouTube doesn't like feel your emotions through the screen and like, oh, they were upset when they were watching that. Let me just go for half a view instead of a whole view. No, a view is a view regardless. Um, you're gonna come across a few ads. Even if you skip them, she's still making money from that. So let's see how this will go for Gabby if we all just stop making videos about her. Because I think that is the best way to go through life right now. Don't make videos on Gabby Hanna because you might end up having your channel taken down by accident. Um, even if that's not her intention, I'm not saying it is, but you know, YouTube sometimes has made some radical choices. So um, yeah, anyway, let's get into the actual video for today. This has been uh, <laughs> long winded. I hope we can kind of edit this down to a more reasonable time anyway. Um, so let's get into mini teas now. So recently the Hype House has moved into the Clout House and a lot of people that used to live in the Clout House, AKA like Face Clan, I think it was, um, have been basically just chatting 
about the hype house moving in there. I think it's a little bit strange that the hype house is now taking over the clout house instead of just buying a house that hasn't been used for group videos anymore. Anyway, apparently Addison Rae and uh, Bryce Hall are back together. Not that I really know who any of these people are, but that seems to be um, the news for today. Now, the hype house, they've been moving from the old house, the old hype house into the new hype house. So they're all in the new hype house, but some of their stuff still left in the in the old hype house. And there was um, a TikTok of a mum taking a few teenagers and breaking into the old hype house. They took a few clothes, uh, they messed the whole place up. They like made some TikToks on the staircase, like the iconic staircase that the hype house people film at. And yeah, I just, why, okay, first of all, right, you, you will break into a house. First of all, you do not know that that's a crime. Okay, but you will break into a house, okay? Not thinking that this multi-million dollar mansion possibly has security? I don't, I don't know. I, anyway, and then you're gonna film yourself and post it on TikTok, the main platform of the Hype House crew. Yeah, some people shouldn't even be parents. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely, if you are a parent who breaks into a YouTuber house, steals stuff, films it and puts it on TikTok, you probably should not be a parent. And that is not me obviously saying, oh, take her kids away. I'm just saying she probably should have thought about that before she had kids. Anyway, about Addison Rae and Charlie. Recently, there's been some tea. So Charlie's been like the biggest TikToker for a while. And then Addison Rae apparently used to like shady comments on TikTok about Charlie, like things like, you're so much prettier than her. I don't know why she gets all the hype. You should be getting more hype. And she used to like those things. So Dixie, uh, Charlie's sister went on twitter.com to defend her sister and basically just say like, why are you shading my sister? Yeah, this is weird. Uh, mainly because Addison Ray is actually older than Charlie. I think Addison is like 19, 20 and Charlie's just turned 16. So it's just such a weird dynamic. And plus they were in the same hype house. I don't know, this is so strange. So uh, Nikita Dragon recently uh, went on a little shady thing. She posted on her Instagram story, basically uh, shading, oh, uh, what's her name? Oh, Daisy Keach and her ex-boyfriend, Michael for dating. So um, if you guys don't remember the story, uh, Nikita Dragon was basically paying a guy to like pretend to be her boyfriend in photo shoots for like different brand deals and stuff and on her Instagram. And then they actually caught feelings for each other. And then they broke up because apparently he was embarrassed to like show Nikita publicly in front of his friends. Like she would not meet his friends or his family and stuff like that. Uh, so they broke up. And now Michael is dating Daisy Keach from the Hype House. And Nikita posted on Instagram story, just basically saying like, if you see them in pictures together, don't tag me, which I think is a super healthy thing to say. Just like, you don't want to see your ex-boyfriend with a new girlfriend. And when people tag you in it, you're like, why would you? It's like, you know, when people say, <laughs> I, know this, I know they're doing it to be helpful, but you know when people send you um, or tag you in hate about yourself and you're like, thanks. That's really cool. So um, then Nikita Dragon actually tweeted out saying um, something along the lines of, Daisy will soon find out what he's really like. Like he will treat her the same way as he treated Nikita. And Daisy then replied to her and just said like, hey, can we just leave this in the past? Like whatever happened in the past happened in the past. You have to like kind of, you know, get over it. And actually Nikita on her Instagram story kind of made, she spoke about why she's so upset. And it's because this is not about him being embarrassed of her. This is about him being embarrassed of her being transgender. Nikita said that he was fine with her behind the scenes, but then when it came to public, um, he was kind of embarrassed of her. And she said that that happens more than you would think that like most transgender women have to deal with that because um, people are, you know, very into them behind the scenes. And then when it comes to publicly showing them, they are afraid and they are afraid of being called gay, even though they are literally women. Um, so that happened. Uh, but I just think, you know, at, th at this point, like let's just leave the past in the past. If it didn't work out with you guys or work out with someone else, but just let people be happy, I guess is where I'm going with this. So recently uh, Jake Paul was caught trespassing in a like shopping center when the protests were happening in LA. No, Arizona, it was in Arizona. And he was filmed basically being handed a vodka bottle that was stolen from one of the shops in the shopping center. But he claimed that he wasn't trespassing. He claimed that he was protesting the whole day. And then, then he wanted to go see kind of what um, the shopping center looked like because it was completely demolished. And he said he was doing it to kind of show what the protests looked like and kind of document it. But in reality, like he didn't, he just wanted content for his vlog. And he says that he was protesting the whole day, but then some Instagram stories were coming out that he was partying the whole day and he was at a restaurant. He was at Nobu, which is like a super expensive sushi place. So like things don't add up with how he's saying it. And then he actually um, did a fundraiser on the video that he was explaining the whole situation. So he did a fundraiser, but then that fundraiser was someone else's fundraiser, which is fine. But then he went on Twitter and he basically took all the praise 
for how much money was raised in the fundraiser, even though most of the money at the start was raised by the original person. And it was about 30,000. And one of Jake Paul's fans basically tweeted at him saying like, I can't believe you already raised 30,000 in 20 minutes when that was the money that was raised by the, uh, the smaller YouTuber. And Jake Paul was like, it's because of you guys. And then he deleted it because he got exposed for that not being his money that he raised. And um, then he was actually charged with trespassing. And he tweeted out saying, okay, fine, arrest me, but let's just go back to the important cause, which is George Floyd. And I completely under like, completely agreed with that, but I knew that he wasn't being genuine. And now he posted on YouTube a prank of him being arrested. Like one of his friends pranked him. They put on his Instagram story. Everyone thought he was being arrested for the trespassing thing. In reality, his, fr his friend pranked him for some content and he basically just mocked the whole thing like he kept on saying like oh let's go back to the important stuff arrest me and let's focus on george floyd and then he does a prank about being arrested sick and tired sick and tired so micah the woman who adopted a child from china when she already had four kids of her own biological kids and then the dad is called james he has his own kind of car cleaning channel uh which he still makes a lot of money on and now people have been calling them out for obviously still having like sponsorships and still making good money from youtube even though they've been cancelled but it's purely because the channels are also different so like there's the family channel which now has no content on it then there's uh, micah's personal channel which has been more cancelled because she's so like heavily aligned with the other channel and then james has his own channel which is a whole completely different audience than like her mummy channel, like a family channel. His is car cleaning. So there's obviously people that don't really care about all this drama and he's still doing fine. And people are kind of having an issue with the fact that he's still got sponsors and stuff on it. Of course he has to feed his other kids. Like of course I'd want them to be held accountable and I think they kind of have, but I'm so torn on this because like they still have kids. And now with everything that's come out about them, will anyone want to employ them? after this like will they have a like employers really look you up nowadays so i'm just wondering if like they would even be able to find a job after this to support their other kids i think they could but it wouldn't be as much of a well-paid job as youtube is uh so i'm kind of torn on this one it's like yeah i want them to be held accountable but then i don't want the kids to go hungry i don't know i hope they have like savings and stuff to keep them going but yeah so that's kind of uh the story and then recently there's been more clips coming out about the way she treated um the the child adopted from china which i've never said his name because i just don't think i want to put that out there on my channel and i haven't shown his um like face or anything so there was this clip of um him wanting food and her saying that it wasn't time to eat right now and he was you know crying and he was having a meltdown and she filmed all of that for people to watch and then she didn't feed him because she was like it's not your feeding time but then if you look up um i think i saw this on drama investigators channel where she said she looked up um like kids that have been adopted and how you should feed them because a lot of the times kids that have been neglected like they probably didn't have much food to eat either they were probably neglected in that aspect of things and it's the reason why he has such a strange poor relationship with food and she has actually mentioned that on like mummy blogs before where she said that he watches other people eat and and um, it annoys them. And he probably does it because he has, you know, a very poor relationship with food because of probably the fact that he hasn't been fed properly. So yeah, what you're supposed to do in that situation when you adopt a child is feed them more regularly and give them more freedom to food so that they can learn how much they need to feel full. And then they will start to regulate their own hunger. But until they do that, they don't actually know how hungry they are a lot of the time because they're just now like coming into a lot of food and they went from having no food to a lot of food. So what you should be doing is feeding them every two to three hours and then three to four hours if they're slightly older. And then also you should be leaving food that doesn't have to be kept in the fridge in their room so that at any point they can grab a snack and eat as well so they can finally regulate their own hunger. Because a lot of times, you know, if you haven't been fed a lot, you start to not feel hungry anymore because your brain kind of is wired to not feel the hunger. So what they need to do is get him back to like a normal state of knowing when he's hungry and when he's not. But that's, that's what happened. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything comment down below and subscribe because I post videos every time something happens. So um, if you wanna see that, subscribe, hit that bell. Did I already say that? I don't even know, I'm losing my mind. Uh, social media links and second channel in the description. My laptop's dying. Um, in the description and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.